Let's take out our Bibles and learn together. If you are going to be effective in serving God, you must love the people that you're called to minister to. And we see that very clearly in the life of the Apostle Paul. Paul was concerned deeply for those that he was sent to. Take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Romans and chapter 15. Now, again, we're going to see that the Apostle Paul, he had a great concern and a great love for those in Rome, that congregation there of believers that consisted of both Jews and Gentiles. And we have seen that many times Paul had a desire to come unto them in order that he might minister to them, that he might be a blessing to this congregation. But what we're going to see is that similarly in Paul's life, he encountered opposition. Those who did not want Paul to carry out successfully the will of God. And that's just a reminder to us that we need to be individuals that overcome. We should expect much opposition. The enemy does not want us to carry out the purposes of God. And why is this love and concern for others so important? Because if we don't have that true love, that commitment to be a blessing to others, then when these obstacles and these hindrances come into our lives, if we don't have that great commitment towards them, we're going to give up, we're going to make an excuse, we're not going to persevere and be assured that true servants of God persevere they find through the anointing of the spirit the way to overcome the opposition and the attacks of the enemy well as i said look with me to romans chapter 15 and we're going to begin with verse 22 where it says therefore also being hindered many times from coming to you So once again, we see clearly Paul makes that statement many times being hindered from coming to you. This is what we've seen over and over. Paul has that desire to come to Rome, but he's not able to fulfill it. But we know something. Paul, this having this abiding love for these individuals, he's going to make it to Rome. Secondly, look now to verse 23. He sees that there's a timing issue. He writes in verse 23, but now no longer having place in these regions where Paul has been ministering. He says, I have gone throughout these regions, no longer having a place where it is necessary for me to go and minister to Paul's convinced now is the time for him to go to Rome. And therefore, he says in the second part of verse 23, but having great desire to come to you for many years. So Paul had this desire based upon this love for this congregation in Rome to come to them for many years, but he was not able to but now sensing that the ministry in this various regions is coming to an end he senses that now is the time for him to go to rome and in light of that he says and whenever i come he says into spain i will come unto you so on the way to rome he's going to pass through spain And he has a double purpose for doing that. One is this, as you keep reading, he says, for I hope to pass through, meaning pass through these areas to see you. So this is one of the reasons it's a necessary stopping point. But the second reason is this. He says, and by you being, and here it is, being equipped. Now, what he's saying is this. In order to make a journey, there are requirements. 
there are things that one needs they need certain things in order to make that journey supplies and he says that primarily when i go to spain i'm going to be equipped and the message is so that i can continue on unto you and not only does he want to be equipped on his way to rome and also to be equipped by the romans for additional travels but he also says look at the end of verse 24 if you first partially and he says that i would be fulfilled now what does he mean there it's an awkward expression what he says is this there is a physical reason these supplies that i need but that's only partial by you i'm going to be fulfilled so he says there is a physical need these supplies for making such a journey but also he speaks about him being fulfilled and this is fulfilled inwardly spiritually by by seeing them having fellowship with them ministering to them all of this is a sense of renewal for paul so paul has this desire and he knows something and we see a very important principle and that's this when you minister to another it is going to have a positive outcome on you you are going to be renewed spiritually when you are effective serving others it is going to empower you it is going to make you a better servant for others and this is what paul is revealing to us at the end of verse 24 now verse 25 but now i am going into jerusalem ministering to the saints so we see something israel and jewish individuals always were at the foremost of paul's thought now we know something he has said previously that he is the apostle to the gentiles but that did not stop paul from understanding his obligation as we've learned in romans chapter 1 and verse 16 that the gospel goes first and there should always be an emphasis in sharing the gospel with the jewish people and paul is speaking to this when he says look again at verse 25 but now i go into jerusalem ministering to the saints and why is he doing this well notice the correlation he's going to jerusalem to deliver something yes to minister to the saints in jerusalem but notice what it says in verse 26 for and the subject is those in macedonia and acacia they thought it well literally it's a word which means to think thoroughly to arrive at a conclusion that is right that is good so it seemed good to those in macedonia and acacia that they should make some contribution contribution for the poor ones of the saints in jerusalem so they were burdened they thought it seemed well proper that they make this contribution for the poor ones in jerusalem and this is a foundational principle and we'll see why they thought it was good in the next verse look at verse 20 27 where it says for they and it's the same word thinking that something is good proper that it's well so these individuals thinking that it was well because they they were obligated to them why they sensed a a obligation to the ones in jerusalem why because they in the spiritual so their spiritual condition was was ministered to by by jewish individuals like paul and therefore they felt that because they the gentiles shared in the spiritual benefits that they should also contribute and this is what it says 
that they ought to also in the, the material, that is the fleshly things, to serve them. So what he's saying is this. Those in Macedonia and Acacia, they, thinking thoroughly, it seemed right, it seemed proper, it was the well thing to do, that they make this contribution because they, the Gentiles, had received much spiritual blessing, the truth of God's revelation, that gospel message that gives life. So if they receive from their spiritual need, how much more so should they be willing to contribute to the physical needs of those individuals in Jerusalem? They were glad, they understood it was proper to do such a thing. Now, verse 28. Therefore, this, what's he referring to? This contribution that was entrusted to Paul for those in Jerusalem. He says, therefore, this I am going to fulfill. And here it says, after fulfilling and sealing to them this fruit. And what it says is this. Very important that the concept fruit is mentioned. Fruit is a, a produce. It's an outcome of a, and a result. So what they're saying is this. You have ministered to us spiritually. We understand that God's revelation, his word, the gospel came first to Israel and from Israel it went forth. And that has produced fruit in our life. And from this fruit, both spiritually and when we walk in spiritual truth, it's going to have a physical blessing. And they, based upon that physical blessing, I'm talking about financial blessing, they took a portion of that in order to send it to Israel by means of Paul. So Paul is saying here, look again at the text, verse 28. He says, therefore this, after fulfilling, after carrying out this obligation to give them this, this contribution, this gift, having sealed it to them, this fruit, he says, I will, will depart unto you into Spain. He's going to begin that journey through Spain with the objective to arrive to Rome in order that he might minister to them. And there's that physical aspect that he might be equipped for the return journey. So not only is Paul coming there to minister, but also he says, and we'll come to this in a moment, that he is going to be made full, that he is going to be rejuvenated, that he is going to be empowered by serving others. And this is a principle that you and I need to understand, that when we are a blessing to others, it's really going to be a blessing to us that through obedient service in the name of God, based upon that loving others as ourself, it is going to change us. It is going to empower us. It is going to give us a right perspective that we understand in a greater way what is the purpose of God. Having his perspective, understanding what God wants to do in our life and through our life. In other words, I'm saying this. When you are faithful to minister to others, to assist them, to help them, to bless them, it is going to have a very positive outcome and working in your life. Through doing ministry, we grow and mature and we become more effective servants to our Lord and Savior. Let's move on to the next verse. Look, if you would, to verse 29 he says here but i know that after coming to you in the fullness so he says whenever i should come to you in the fullness of blessing now that's why he's coming to be a blessing he says but i know that whenever i come unto you in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of messiah I will come. He says, whenever this may be, I am committed to do this and to bring you the fullness. See, it's just not 
this salvation experience but the gospel has great great power to make much change in a person's life and we see here and this is a vital point we see a connection between the gospel and blessing it's not uh, by accident we find these two words going together look again at the text he says but i know that coming unto you in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of messiah i will come meaning it's for this purpose that that they are already believers but they are going to know the fullness of the blessing of this gospel and what do you think that he's referring to well the ability that having been saved by the gospel it's not just that your name is written in the lamb's book of life and that you'll have that kingdom experience but the full blessing of the gospel is that we get to participate in what god is doing that we get to share a role in the purposes the will the work of god and when we are committed to do the will of god when we are participating in the purposes of god it is going to give us that joy that contentment that peace that passes all understanding you're going to know why you have been sent into this world what you are called to do and when you are faithful to that the outcome of that is a great spiritual satisfaction this is what paul is referring to now why am i saying these things in light of this well look at verse 30. paul says but i encourage you brethren so he wants to encourage them in what understanding the outcome what the gospel does the gospel of course saves us the gospel is a message of redemption but the gospel also transformed that person who receives the gospel into a living and walking sacrifice unto god meaning that we become servants we remember what paul said earlier that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice unto the lord it's only through the gospel that we can become that so once again he says but i encourage you brethren meaning brothers and sisters in the lord that through our lord messiah yeshua and through the love of the spirit now notice he says here through our lord notice that when we are are recognizing the lordship of messiah in our life that brings about in our life the working of the holy spirit and notice what it says here what he writes concerning the holy spirit it says and through the love of the spirit now i began our study in this session by saying how necessary it is if you are going to be a faithful servant of god that you love those that you are ministering to and in the natural you won't have that love being able to love your neighbor as yourself to truly desire to bless them to be an assistance to them to overcome the opposition of the enemy that stands between you ministering to them effectively overcoming all of that is rooted in love and that love is not natural but rather it is an outcome of the anointing of the holy spirit so the holy spirit works in my life in order that i have a true love we can say it another way a sincere love for others that i want to be a blessing unto them this is what paul is saying now notice he's giving them an opportunity to demonstrate this this principle because he says look again at verse 30 but i encourage you brethren through our lord messiah yeshua and through the love of the spirit that you do something that you strive together with me now striving this is a work word of of effort it has within it this striving together with me this this concept of persevering enduring overcoming 
And notice what he's asking for and encouraging them to do is to minister unto him. How? Well, he says that you strive together with me in prayers and be half of me to God. So he says here, pray for me and with me in regard to my relationship with God, my calling from God that I might be successful. So here's the example. Paul is encouraging them to minister to him by praying with him in behalf of him in regard to his relationship with God. What specifically? We'll look now to the next verse, verse 31. He tells us what it is. We don't have to guess. He says, in order that I be delivered, being delivered from the ones who refuse to be convinced. Now, this is a very interesting expression. Being individuals who are refusing to be convinced. Now, this means this. When you examine the teachings of Messiah, let me say it another way. When you encounter the truth of the new covenant, that New Testament revelation, if you are sincerely looking for the truth of God, you are going to be led, you are going to be convinced that the New Testament is indeed revelation from God. These individuals that are rejecting that and in opposition to what Paul's doing, he says, these are the ones who are refusing to be convinced where in Judea another term for Israel and the regions around Jerusalem. This is where the Pharisees were and the leaders of Judaism. And they were refusing to be convinced by the truth of God's revelation. And they were were antagonistic towards Paul. And this is what he's asking for. He's encouraging them that they would strive together with him in prayer for him in regard to this opposition that he's encountering. Look again at verse 31. In order that I should be delivered from these ones, refusing to be convinced in Jerusalem, and in order that my ministry, Paul's service, he says, which is in Jerusalem. Now notice that. He speaks about him being the apostle to the Gentiles, meaning to the nations. But in another sense, his ministry is where he says, which is in Jerusalem, that it should be well-pleasing, this ministry that he does in Jerusalem, that it might be well-pleasing to the saints. What's he's asking for? That he has an effective ministry in Jerusalem for to the believers there verse verse 32 he wants to be effective in order that he says with joy that i should come to you through the will of god meaning this that he has joy that that he has come to them and all of this is at the outcome of him being used by god according to the will of god that he accomplishes the purposes of God. This is what Paul is saying. Now, we're going to conclude with one last verse, and we're going to see how this verse puts everything together. And before we look at this verse, we need to remember that even though the New Testament was written in Greek, there's a Hebraic background. And the word that I want us to focus in on is the word that Paul is going to, and that is the word peace. What is that word peace in Hebrew? You all know it. It's the word shalom. But the problem is we hear that word peace, and oftentimes we simply think an absence of violence or conflict. Everything is uh, tranquil and, and nice and good. This is not what the word shalom is about at all when we have biblical peace we need to realize something there is an inherent relationship between biblical peace 
and the will of God that's being fulfilled. And that's what Paul is committed to. Paul is committed to the will of God being fulfilled in his life and through his life and as he ministers to others, that the will of God might be fulfilled in their life as well. This is Paul's objective. And he realizes that all of this is only possible as an outcome of that that blessing of the gospel and that that love of the Spirit and that, that power that comes from committing to the purposes of God. Notice what he says. In this passage, again, the end of verse 32 where he says, In order that in joy I should come to you through the will of God and being refreshed by you. Now, this is this refreshing that I talked about. Being, once again, encouraged, refreshed in order to do the work of God. And when we are in that that state, having been refreshed, being spiritually equipped, notice what he says, now our last verse, verse 33. And the God of peace, this is the God of shalom, this God that works in order that his will should be fulfilled in our lives, he says here, and that the God of peace be with all of you, And then he says, Amen. This is Paul's utmost desire. That these individuals in Rome, that they too are used as servants of the living God. Doing that which is according to the will of God. And that through this service of theirs, that the God of peace be with them. Meaning the God that ministers and works and empowers and equips in order that his will might be fulfilled through his people. So let me ask you one last question. Is that your objective? Is that what you're committed to? Being someone who is used by God in order that his will, not ours, not our wants and desires, but his will might be fulfilled through and in your life.